Before we start this tutorial, we should probably talk about what's already set up in this game. So we've already set up a number of groups. So if we go to the group settings, you can see that we've set up a number of groups. But the two that we're going to focus on in this tutorial are enemies and maze follow enemies. And the reason there are two different groups is because I want the ability to collide with the maze walls and I also want the ability to sense when the players are being hit with the enemies, but I want the players to be able to pass through the enemies, but I don't want the enemies to pass through the walls. So I'm going to have two different groups, one that's a sensor, one that's not a sensor. That way we can sense if the player is colliding with it, but we are physically solid when we hit the walls. I'm going to use the enemies to be the sensor, and I'm going to use the maze follow enemies to not be a sensor and actually hit the walls. That means I'm going to have to create two different collision boxes in my, my enemy. So I'm going to start by doing that. I'm going to go to the flea, which is my enemy. So my flea. And I'm going to go to the collision boxes. And you'll see that there's already one collision box here. And since this first one is going to be a sensor, it actually can stay a, a rectangle or a box and not cause any problems with movement through my maze. So I'm going to check this box to make it a sensor, and it is going to be the enemy. Okay, But I need a second collision box that's actually going to hit the walls. And this one can't be a sensor, otherwise it will just pass through the walls. So I'm going to add a circle, say OK. It's not going to be a sensor this time. This time it is going to be in the group Maze Follow Enemies, which hits the walls and collides with the walls. It's not a sensor, though, because we actually want it to physically collide with the walls. So at this point, we should have things set up for our flea to at least test and see if I can hit the flea. I've already set up uh, things like if the flea hits the actor, then it's going to damage their health. So let's go ahead and test this game and make sure that the flea stays within the walls, but that the player can pass through the enemy, no problem, but is still taking damage from the flea. If we've put everything together correctly, then the flea should stay inside the maze. I should be able to pass right through it, but I'm still taking damage. Okay, and so the trick here is that we have two separate collision boxes on the flea. One of them's a sensor colliding with the player. One of them is not a sensor colliding with the walls. So now that we have that set up, let's set it up so that the flea will actually chase the player. To do this, the first thing I need to do is go and download a behavior. And there's several behaviors you can use, but I wrote one specifically uh, for my purposes. So I'm going to do a search for follow. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And you can see there's this follow target within range. And that's the one I'm going to use because it allows me to set a range of motion so that the things that are far away don't chase me all the way across the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. Once it's downloaded, I can just close out of the code. That's, I've already checked that the code works. And I'm going to go back to my flea and I'm going to add the behavior for following target within a range. I'll set up anything I want to set up here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put a 150 in there, but I'll, I'll need to go set that in my scene as well. So the one thing that I need to be able to do is say who the target actor is going to be, and I need to do that in the scene. So if you see right here, it tells me that I need to go to the customize, uh, customization in the scene itself. So I'm going to go to the scene. I'm going to click on one of my... So choose my arrow selector here. Click on one of my fleas. Click on Customize. And then I'm going to hit this button right here to make sure that I've got all of the current behaviors loaded here. So notice that it loads in this follow target with range that I just added. But I probably am going to have to update these values since I put these in here before I added the, the behavior. So I'm going to set this to 150. And then I choose the actor I want to chase. So I'm going to choose the rat. 
And I can do that with the others as well. I'll just have to repeat that process. Choose the rat. And I could even set a bigger range of influence. They don't all have to be the same. And now let's test the game and let's see what the impact is. You'll notice that I have to get closer to this flea than I do to this one because I set the range of influence to be different for each of them. So notice, oh, I forgot to set that my flea can't rotate. But notice it is trying to follow me. But if I get far enough away, it stops following me. It's still spinning around. But if I get closer, there it starts to go after me again. Now this one over here starts following me a lot sooner because 250 is a lot bigger distance. But I should still be able to pass right through it. But I am taking damage. And then escape. So that's basically a, the summary here is that one, you want the, uh, the fleas to have two collision boxes. One to hit the walls, one to hit the player, but as a sensor so that the player can pass through the enemy and not get blocked by them. And then two, to have the fleas chase you, you'll need to go download a behavior, uh, either from Stencil Forge or you can download it from my website. And then uh, make sure that when you add the behavior to your flea that you go into your scene, hit customize, choose the target you want to hit, and make sure that these values down here are the correct values. Because if you've already added the items to the scene, these will not be the same as what you set them in the actor itself.